Well, hey there, fellow streakers. How are you this fantastic either morning, evening, afternoon, whenever it is you're listening to the podcast? Hopefully you are absolutely fantastic. This is Jeffrey J. Downs, and I'm without my co-host, Jamie Downs. She is currently in Colorado with our second oldest daughter, who is going to be having our first grandchild coming up in July. We are so excited for that grandchild to be here. And uh, so Jamie's out there having the baby shower and enjoying time with uh, our daughters. I'm here holding down the fort and getting ready to move. We're, we have the big move going to Colorado coming up at uh, in the middle of July. A lot of people have been asking us when we make the move. It's in the middle of July. We'll be moving out there. If you're new to the show uh, and out where? Well, we're moving from Atlanta, Georgia in the United States to uh, Broomfield, Colorado. And that's where we'll be for the next little while. We're going to move in with my mom. You know, I've always wanted to be a millennial. <laughs> and so we're going to move in with my mom and live in the basement. No, I'm kidding. We're not going to live in the basement. We're going to actually live on the on the main on the top floor is where we'll be with my mom. Uh, as some of you know, uh, may be familiar with my father passed away last year in June. Um, God rest his soul. He's a fantastic friend and uh, I miss him. Uh, but uh, that left my mom with a very large home. And so Jamie and I have decided to go out there and to uh, be with her in her home for a little while, uh, see what to kind of what the next place or the next step in life will take her. So probably too much personal information, not things that you wanted to know. However, I just thought I'd let you know why Jamie isn't with us today. And that took me down that course of conversation. What we're going to be talking about today is the first of a series of podcasts where we'll get back to the basics of streaking. Today, I'm going to talk to you about setting up your floor. Okay, We're going to be talking about what that is. And the way that I'm going to introduce that is two conversations that we had this week. Well, one that Jamie and I had uh, with our family around the dinner table with three very special guests, who I'll talk about in just a second. And the second conversation was one that I had yesterday with one of my fellow streakers out there, Abby. If you're new to the show, welcome. This is the Streaking Show, the Streaking Podcast. And in the Streaking Show and Streaking Podcast, we talk all things streaking. Now, it's not the type of streaking that you may have heard. That's the incorrect definition. The correct definition of streaking is the simple, uh, conscious, consistent actions that create life-changing results. That is what we're talking about. And there are three laws to setting up successful streaks, which is what streaking is all about. First law is to make the activity on which you choose to streak or to make consistent consecutive in your life laughably simple. The second law is no record, no streak. And the third law is that you create a community or join a community of streakers. What we're going to do through the next series of podcasts is talk about each one of those things. And uh, we'll also talk about the B statement or becoming who you want to be and how streaking supports that. To set all of that up, the conversation that I'm going to have with you today is based on two conversations that I, that again, that one that Jamie and I had with three special guests and another one. And just before I get to those conversations and setting it all up, we need to recognize uh, a streaker out there that is doing phenomenal work and someone who we will have on the podcast coming up in a few weeks. This streaker is John Fisher. John is a lawyer and someone who I've had the privilege of getting to know over the past several months and is just a phenomenal individual. He's written a couple of books on how to set up your law practice, you know, the business side of law practice. And he uh, he has just these profound books. I've ordered both of them, even though not a lawyer, don't plan to be. My oldest daughter and her husband are on course to become lawyers. I think I'll give these books to them after I finish reading them because of the little bit that I've read that John has written. It's really fascinating how you set up a law firm to be a profitable business and some of the things that he does. He has taken to streaking and as actually more... St- He's been involved in it really without knowing, if you will, consciously and deliberately the laws of streaking for quite some time. We've highlighted him in one of our in our Instagram posts and also Pinterest posts and on streakingmastery.com, but I want to highlight him here on the show. For 118 months, he has a streak of, and what is the streak? He says in the fall of 2011, I began a streak. Every month without fail, I mail a print newsletter. 
This may be the first monthly streak that we have highlighted, and I think it's absolutely fantastic. The name of the newsletter is Lawyer Alert, and he re- and he sends it out to um, our law firm's referral partners and prospective referral partners. Turns out, I love writing the copy for the newsletter, and this is John speaking. There is nothing that is more valuable for staying top of mind with referral partners than a monthly print newsletter. Every month, our referral partners, 460 and growing. That's pretty significant as you think about it, and prospective referral partners, receive our print newsletter with our best tips for marketing and managing a law firm. I throw in some photos of our kids doing goofy stuff and events that our law firm is doing. Uh, For example, he does Mastermind Experience and Plaintiff's Elite, which is a couple of different things that his law firm sets up and does. I've actually been able to present at uh, Mastermind, I think it was Mastermind Experience that I presented at, speaking about streaking and also um, talking about the four disciplines of execution. Franklin Covey's The Four Disciplines of Execution. I enjoyed the entire event. It was really a lot of fun. Uh, many, many lawyers from different law firms joining to talk about how they can build the business of their law practice. He says that um, he really has been doing this, even though he has a streak since the fall of 2011, a monthly streak. He says that 10 years after mailing out our first newsletter, Lawyer Alert is still going strong. The streak lives. All right. So he's got, you know, not only 10 years, but also in the fall of 2011 began the streak of really paying attention to without fail, sending it out monthly. That was a great big congratulations to John, and I'm really excited. Jamie and I are really excited to have him on the show uh, coming up in uh, just a few weeks. Okay, now that we've highlighted that, let's get on with what we're talking about today. And there's two stories that I want to tell you. The first story, we had missionaries from the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints over for dinner, And my son is currently serving a mission for um, the church in Phoenix, Arizona. And so oftentimes we'll have these young men or young women who serve for either two years or 18 months to come over uh, to our home and have some dinner with us. Well, when they walked in the front door to our home, they noticed to the right where my office is set up that there are great big block letters across the top that say streaking. And they looked at streaking. They looked at me. They looked back up at streaking, looked at me. And something wasn't computing in their brains. And you know that this they were struggling with how does the definition of streaking that we know jive with what it is? Why would you prominently display that in such a way that everyone could see it? Obviously, a conversation ensued. And in that conversation, we started to talk about streaking. Well, one of the young men, so we went to dinner and we had dinner. And as we were sitting there, one of the young men started to question streaking. And you could tell that he wanted to be a little bit more direct with his questions than what he felt comfortable doing. And so at one point I had to say to him, look, um, it's okay. You can be direct with me. Uh, and, and I said to him, you don't have to worry about uh, couching your words in kindness. Just say it candidly and we'll be able to have a, a direct conversation. Here's what he said. I'm having, I'm struggling with Law number one, which is make it laughably simple. He said, it seems to me that you're putting some arbitrary limit on my opportunity to grow by making something laughably simple. In other words, saying that if you just do the laughably simple, you're going to be fantastic. He said, let me give you an example. I'm going to be going back to the Air Force Academy. And the Air Force Academy has a physical fit test that is strenuous. And I will need to prepare to pass that physical fit test. If I have a streak of running at least one mile every day and I only do that, I'm not going to get the necessary uh, physicalness that I need to pass that test. I will not be ready for it. And And I agreed with him. I said, you're right. You won't be. He said, well, then help me reconcile how doing something laughably simple is going to help me to improve. And I said, well... Let's look at it in this way. You have a goal to pass the physical fit test. And a goal is an admirable thing. A goal is something that you reach for. It has a start date and end date. It has a starting line, a finish line, and a deadline. That goal is an aspirational goal that you will say, yes, I accomplished it, or no, I did not. You're either going to pass the physical fit test or you're not. So you will start to do things now to get yourself ready. You're going to do more 
cardio and more weightlifting than you would by setting a streak. You're going to do things that will, or do activities that will allow you to get there, health activities and so forth that will allow you to pass that test or you'll work to pass that test. I said, that's great. And that's what you want to do. But a streak is not a goal. A goal stands on a streak because now you've gone, you've passed the physical fit test, you've achieved the goal. What do you do the next day? Well, if you have a streak, you run or walk at least one mile or you do one at least one exercise or you do at least one squat or you lift at least one weight. You do your streak. In other words, you stand on the floor of your streaks. Now, in this moment, when he started to hear that, all of a sudden it came into focus as far as what a streak really is. A streak is not a goal. And a goal is not a streak. A goal, again, is something for which you are aspiring to achieve. And the floor on which you stand to get to that goal, that is the streak. That's why we always say to start with a streak is because any good goal, any goal for which you are reaching needs a floor to stand on. Let's take it, I mean, across the board, let's take it in a couple of different instances. For example, you want to be a writer. Well, to be a writer, you need to write. And if you want to write, then set a streak to write at least one sentence every single day. And in writing one sentence every single day, at least one, that sets up a floor. It does something else for you as well. That floor, it gives you the opportunity to look at and consider, do I really like writing? Because if you have a streak to write at least one sentence daily and you're motivated to keep that going and alive, you'll keep that streak moving then you know that, you know what, this is truly someone I want to be or someone I want to aspire to be. Then once you've set up that floor, now you can start to reach for a goal. For example, the goal of writing a a, a book. I'm going to write a book this year. Let's say that that's your goal. Well, if you have a streak of writing at least one sentence daily, then what will happen is you'll build on top of that streak several days where you'll write much more than one sentence daily in pursuit of your goal to write a book. And as you work toward writing that book, and I remember the days when um, we were getting ready to publish Streaking, you know, the two months before we were ready to publish it, there were days where I'd spend two and three hours editing and that Jamie would spend another couple of hours reviewing and reading and that she and I together would, would read it and write it and have all of those things in place. And there was a lot of energy that was going toward that. In fact, the focus and the time was very condensed and um, concentrated around getting that book written. Then came the publish date when it actually got released to the world. And if you haven't had a chance to get out there and buy it yet, Streaking is at Amazon. It's also at Barnes and Noble or anywhere indie books are offered. Streaking is out there. But that day that it got published, I remember how exciting it was and how fun it was for it to be released and the hundreds of copies that went out there, you know, on the on the opening day, if you will. And it was a blast. And what did I do on opening day? I wrote a sentence. That's right. I kept the floor of the streak. I never went below it. You see, in this life, we we contend with gravity physical gravity, and also emotional gravity. The gravity is always trying to pull us down. It's keeping us down. Well, in, and as you look at pulling us down, if you don't have a floor on which to stand, you're going to fall. Doesn't matter where you are, anywhere in the world, if you step off a ledge and there's no floor beneath you, you will fall. And if you don't have something to arrest your fall, like a parachute or maybe a, a base jumping suit, you're going to fall fast and you're going to end up getting hurt quite significantly. You have to have a floor in which to stand. That's why it's so significant to start with a streak. Let me give you another example. So I was talking with Abby, like I mentioned previously, and she and I were having a conversation about her daughter. Her daughter, who's in middle school, was looking at the challenge or the goal of running at least or or running 100 miles in the summer. And Abby asked me, she said, tell me a little bit about the difference or, or not the difference, how a streak and a goal work together. Because if, uh, you know, my daughter is looking at a hundred miles to run in the summer, 
is, is, does she set a streak to do that or is that a goal? And the answer is that's a goal because it has a starting, a finish, and or it has a, a starting line, a finish line, and a deadline. I've got the starting line of beginning of summer. I'm going to start running. A finish line of 100 miles by the end of the summer. Um, and that, or a finish line of 100 miles and a deadline of by the end of the summer. That's a goal. Start line, finish line, deadline. Now, how does a streak work with that? Here we go again. I've got a streak to run or walk at least one mile daily. As I'm doing that particular streak, there are days in order to get the 100 miles where you'll be running more than just the one mile of running or walking. And as you're doing that, you'll probably get more and more as you progress towards your goal. In other words, it'll be a little bit of a hockey stick up where, you know, on the final day, you may have to run, you know, five or six miles to finish off your goal of getting 100 miles. What do you do the next day? The next day, you run or walk at least one mile. Do you see? You see how this, the streak works together with everything else that's out there in order for you to be able to accomplish the goals to become who you want to be. I do a lot of work with goal setting. I work with a lot of organizations who talk about um, the goals that they're striving to achieve. And one thing that is very important when you are thinking about setting your goals is you do one at a time. Don't do two, don't do three, don't do five, don't have goals plural. It is one goal at a time. However, you can have several streaks because your streaks are the floor. They're the most basic thing. They're the thing that you will never go below, no matter what. When you've run the marathon, I remember um, I was talking with uh, Talon and he was talking about training for doing a little bit of work to train for the marathon. (laughs) And he said, you know, I was training for the marathon And as I was training for the marathon, he he got a little bit of that done. I ran the marathon and then I didn't run for two or three months after that. And why? Because he didn't have a floor of running. He hadn't been consistently running. And so there was no floor and therefore he fell all the way off the running cliff and didn't do it at all anymore. Now, he may not have wanted to. However, he could have found out a lot sooner by having a streak of running or walking at least one mile daily, whether or not he liked that form of exercise. You see, that's what the streak does is it helps you become who you want to be. And it does it by setting up a floor in any one of your four areas of life, physical, personal, professional, or spiritual. And as you look at those four areas of life, think to yourself, you know what? Start with a streak. What is the streak that I'm going to set up in order to know whether or not I enjoy doing that particular thing? Because if you don't and you don't want to keep the streak alive, then move to whatever's next. And by the way, this works anywhere. I mean, if you want to, for example, you think you want to start investing in the stock market or uh, you know, be a financial guru on Wall Street. Well, how do you do that? What is it that you do? Well, start with a streak. Start with a streak of, I'm going to review at least one stock daily, or I'm going to review at least one uh, annual report uh, weekly. Any of those things, you start with that streak and that helps you to set up the floor. Now, let's say you don't enjoy doing that. Well, you probably don't want to be someone who's trading stocks on Wall Street. Let's say you want to be a social media manager. You start by reviewing at least one social media concept daily. That will very quickly tell you whether or not you want to move into this world of social media. And then if you do, guess what? You can start to set goals because you're going to stand them up on the floor of this streak. When I talked with uh, this young man who's going to go back to the Air Force Academy and to Abby, and we established that the streak is the intentional, conscious, consistent action that you're going to do, and you're not going to stop it through time, and then you can build goals on top of that, That's when the light bulbs went off. That's when it came all together. The streak is where you start. And when you start with a streak, you can truly become who you want to be. Because to become that person, you have to do things consistently. You are who you consistently choose to be. I think it was Ralph Waldo Emerson that talked a little bit about consistency or what you repeatedly do is you know, who you will become. And that is the truth. As you think about it, what you intentionally repeatedly do 
is in is is what will allow you to become the person you really want to be. So in this uh, in the next series of podcasts, like I said, Jamie and I are going to be talking all about the basics of streaking. So if this is your first foyer into streaking, just know that this is the start. This podcast is the start of the several that are coming up where we will talk about each law in depth. So we'll talk about law number one, make it laughably simple, where that came from, why it's important, uh, how to set streaks so that they're laughably simple, what they look like, and um, how, how profound that really is. Then we'll talk about the no record, no streak. And even though it seems like, well, you know, really, do you need to keep a record of it? And the answer is absolutely yes. We'll talk about why that is significant and important. And then third, creating a community or joining a community for success. We'll be talking about that. And finally, we'll end up this series of podcasts with the B statement and how to write a B statement such that it guides you in pointing you towards your streaks. There's many of you who are our fellow streakers out there that have um, really been impacted by profoundly streaking. And I would encourage you to share it. Share it with those who you interact with, talk with them about how streaking has helped you and what it has done to help you become who you want to be. And also, as you talk with people, you know, let them know. There's many people who have said, I've read the book. After I read the book, I didn't really understand. You know, you kind of get the concept of streaking, but it's only after you read the book that you have it sink in. And that that's really what it was for us. I mean, as we wrote the book, that's where we got all of the concepts and principles clarified for us. So read, have them read the book, read the book, give them a copy of the book, and then go on if you wouldn't mind and just review it on Amazon. Uh, Reviews are the lifeblood of books. In other words, they keep getting put in front of people the more reviews that they have. So if you wouldn't mind just going out there and give it whatever stars you think it it, uh, deserves. And if you want to, you can write a little review to go along with that, but you don't have to. In the interim, if you have something or streaker that you would like to recommend to us that we you want us to highlight on the show, please shoot us an email at Jeffrey, J-E-F-F-E-R-Y at streakingmastery.com or at Jamie, J-A-M-I at streakingmastery.com. If you have some success that you'd like to share with us and we can highlight it on the show, please also share that with us. Also, feel free to download the app, Streaking, on the Apple App Store or Google Play and look for that. Also, you can follow us on Pinterest or Instagram or go to Facebook at Streaking Mastery or you can look us up at www.streakingmastery.com. Well, hopefully this has been something that you've enjoyed. I've enjoyed talking with you. I'm looking forward to having Jamie with me. Hopefully I've done an okay job representing us both as she's away. But until we talk again, keep streaking. It's the small and simple things that make you grow into what you're hoping 